Ichigo's best friend, and technically brother, just stabbed him in the back. You heard me, Uryu Ishida, someone who has been fighting alongside Ichigo for the entire series, has now become his greatest enemy. But it even gets worse, as Yuhaba, the son of God, has decided to make Ishida his successor, the next Quincy King. This betrayal has bestowed powers to Ishida beyond imagination, something that can even face off against Ichigo's dual blades. Yuhaba literally gave him the letter A for antithesis, which allows Uryu to reverse any damage he has taken onto his enemy, along with boosting his combat and spiritual power comparable to a captain level Shinigami. And this upgrade of course came with a new Riz, as Ishida gets a fresh bow. Called Healing Borgen. <laughs> yeah, it just means holy bow. But was this new drip really worth it? Well, to understand Ishida's betrayal, we need to rewind all the way back to his origins and upbringing. Uryu was born into one of the last remaining prestigious Ishida family. His parents were Ryugen Ishida and Kanei Katagiri. But in reality, Uryu was never meant to be born. Why? Well, because the Ishida family took in a young Quincy girl who Ryukin was betrothed to eventually marry. This was none other than Masaki Kurasaki, Ichigo's mom. Her parents had died when she was a teenager, so to keep the Quincy bloodline strong, Ryukin's mother adopted her so she can give birth to a healthy full-blooded Quincy. However, after being infected by holification, Masaki's blood was tainted, which saved her from taking her cousin's seed. <laughs> okay, that's good. I, sorry, sorry, I'm taking the piss. <laughs> but listen, I, on the upside, she did land a sexy young strapping Ishin. So I guess Ryu can settle and bang this maid instead. It should have been me, not him! But due to this connection between Masaki and Ryukin, along with originating from the same source, being Yuhaba, essentially makes Ryu and Ichigo brothers. Well, at least cousins. Another connection these two share is how they lost their mothers, which was due to Yuhaba performing the Auswalin nine years years ago, ridding them of their ability and taking it for himself. This resulted in Masaki powerless, dying at the hands of the hollow Grand Fisher, and made Katagiri fatally ill as she was only a half-blooded Quincy. Yuhaba specifically targeted impure Quincy's, so all mixed-blooded Quincy's were affected, including Masaki due to her being tainted. However, Oryu as an outlier here, as he is the only non-pure-blooded Quincy that survived the Oswalin. He also retained all of his powers, which some of the Stern Ritters couldn't even do. The only other example of this is Ichigo. But he don't really count because he got so much main character DNA that it really doesn't matter. Yuhaba himself acknowledged Oryu's feat, which piqued his interest in believing that he must possess a power surpassing his own, making him a worthy candidate to be his Successor. But I'll explain more about that in a bit. Now, with the death of both his wife and former lover, Ryukin went into depression and no longer wanted anything to do with being a Quincy. This forced Uryu as a child to learn the Quincy ways from his grandfather, who he became extremely close with. Unfortunately, this also caused the rift between Uryu and his father as time went on, leading them to have a terrible relationship. But actually more to it, as the real reason Ichida came to hate his dad is because he dissected his own wife's body. Yes, that's right. Ichida had to watch as his own dad dissected his mother in front of him. And from that day onwards, he swore to never become a doctor. You doctor yet? No, dad, I'm 12. Talk to me when you doctor. Ryukin performed an autopsy on her corpse for an extended period of time, despite Uryu heartfelt pleas for him to stop. Things would only become worse for young Ishida as soon after his grandfather, who was his parental figure, his teacher, would die right in front of him at the hands of a hollow. Ishida couldn't do a thing to protect him. In his grief, he didn't blame himself, but the Shinigamis, who he believed should have made it in time to save his grandpa. But 
were purposely told not to. Due to this, Ishida grew to despise Soul Reapers with a passion and would hate them until eventually meeting Ichigo years later. This encounter made Uryu realize his mistake that not all Shinigamis are to be blandly hated. After this moment, Ishida would slowly become more accepting of Shinigamis. This was seen as Ishida attempts to keep Rukia safe from Renji and Ryokuya when they try to take her back to Soul Society. But uh, yeah, he, he gets Bruh. his ass whooped. <laughs> he then would help Ichigo and the gang in their mission to rescue Rukia from Soul Society. Here, Oryu showcased the level he was truly at. By unleashing his secret power, the Quincy Let's Still, which is translated to Lost Style. With this, he greatly increased his strength to the point of being able to go head to head with a Bankai of none other than Captain Mayuri. However, using this ability took a heavy toll as Ishida would lose his Quincy powers. You know, hence the name, Lost Style. But anyways, once they rescued Rukia and returned to the world of the living, Uryu would undergo extensive training with his father to regain his powers. However, his father only agreed to the training if he never associated with Shinigamis ever again. Desperate to get his powers back, Uryu took the deal. His training was brutal as Uryu was pushed both physically and mentally. His father even had to strike his heart to bring his powers back. Also, remember Ishida agreeing to never work with Shinigamis again? Well, yeah, that was thrown out the window. <laughs> As not long after, Ishida would continue to fight alongside Ichigo and his friends throughout the rest of Bleach. He would be integral in not only assisting Ichigo with saving Orihime, but even exposing Ginjo's true intentions to steal Ichigo's powers in the full bring arc. All of this would prompt Ishida and Ichigo to become very close friends, forming an unbreakable trust with one another. That is, until the Son of God appeared. Yuhaba's return to the Bleach world completely flipped everything on its head. This guy declared war, swooped in, ravaged Soul Society, stole the captain's bunkais, and killed Yamamoto, the pinnacle of strength. On top of all of that, Yuhaba revealed to our protagonist that he was inside of him all along. What did he say? Hey. Oh. Wait, wait, wait. Not, not like that. I'm only a piece of him, all right? After snapping his Zompak toe, Ichigo was left on his own journey of self-discovery, training with Squad Zero. But his brother Ishida was also doing the same. With the Sternritter's entrance, Uryu decided to look into his family's archives to learn anything he could about this mysterious Quincy Empire. It's here where he learns about Yuhaba and the war he had a thousand years ago with the Soul Reapers and how the Soul Society decided to enact a mass extermination on the Quincy's. Ishida concludes that the two sides would forever remain at odds, but is conflicted due to his relationship with Ichigo. However, he is then greeted by Yuhaba's second in command, Yugrim Havalt. I have looked at his name, didn't I? Yes. But this Donny convinces Uryu to make the decision to join their cause and fight alongside his people, which he agrees to and becomes the biggest betrayal in the series. Okay, come on, it's still up there though, if it was true. Hey. Yuhaba specifically targeted Uryu for recruitment because he was wary of him. As I mentioned earlier, to survive the Ashwalan meant Ishida was an anomaly, which made Yuhaba want to keep him close. In order to maintain control over him, he had decided to not only name him his successor, but give him a power directly derived from his blood. Ishida was already one of the strongest Quincy's in the series, and with the boost from Yuhaba, he becomes even more powerful. One of Ishida's biggest strength is in his strong intellect. In fact, I'd say he's one of the smartest characters in Bleach. No, he's not as smart as Urahara or Aizen, but for a human with a limited time span, he's insanely intelligent. With this, he's able to find weak points in his opponents, even overcoming disadvantage he has through thinking on his feet. His glasses anime powers ain't no joke. In fact, we see this with his Quincy move, Kirin Kyaku. Along with his physical speed, his brain processing time becomes near instant. With this, Uryu was able to deduce Ichigo's spiritual pressure and Rukia's true identity very quickly. Along with being able to make quick life and death decisions in a matter of seconds, Uryu can also speak multiple languages. Yep, he's a polyglot, possessing knowledge of Spanish, German, and many other languages. But most importantly, Uryu succeeded where I failed. He became a doctor. Do you guys understand how hard that sh 
is. Ishida also has a large amount of spiritual pressure and awareness, being able to sense hollows from quite a distance. Like other Quincy's, Ishida can manipulate Reishi and is master of Ginto, a Quincy equivalent of Kido. Then there is his busted bow known as the Herig Bogan. This holy bow, which that, that's literally what it's called, the holy bow allows Uryu to draw Reishi from the surrounding areas and form arrows from it. This guy is so precise with his arrows that it negates an enemy's attack on impact. The bow is his primary weapon and has two major abilities. The first is Herig Feel, or in English, Holy Arrow. These are special arrows Uryu forms with noticeable arrowheads. Then he's able to control the path of these arrows, essentially making them mini missiles. The second is Licked Reagan, which unleashes a barrage of Holy Arrows on an opponent instantly. Originally, Ishida needed to collect Reishi along his left shoulder to, in order to use this ability, but now he can do it at will. But Uryu is more than just an archer. He is also a Jedi because he has a freaking lightsaber. This is Sere Schneider or Soul Cutter, which Uryu can use as his blade. You might think he is an archer, so he's probably mid with the sword, but this dude's built different. He's so capable with it that he was able to defeat Sandwich using his lightsaber. But the one power Ishida possessed that tops every single thing is his antithesis. Each stern ritter is given a special power by Yuha, represented by a letter of the alphabet. An example of this could be stern ritter E, which stands for explode. After joining the stern ritters, Ishida was given his own special power and classified as stern ritter A for antithesis. Antithesis is one of the most broken Quincy powers as the ability allows Uryu to designate any two targets and reverse anything that has already occurred between them. In other words, if Ishida was gravely injured in a fight, he could reverse this on his opponent, simultaneously healing himself and grievously wounding his enemy. Bruh, imagine getting into a fight with this guy and, and you'll beat the out of him and then he just says check my hand and he has the uno reverse card <laughs> that's his power with his new powers his new title and his incredible drip ishida officially joins the war effort against the soul reapers as yuha's successor leading him to finally come face to face with his brother ichigo at the soul king's palace where you tells him to not get involved or he will shoot on sight however ichigo wants to know his reasoning and Uryu simply states it's because he's a quincy Ishida would then watch on as Yuha takes control of Ichigo's Quincy blood and makes him murder the Soul King. Uryu allowing this to happen makes Yuha beyond godlike as he surpasses his father and obtains Almighty being the power to control reality. At this point, you must be thinking that this guy has lost his mind, that he's an unredeemable villain, but you're wrong. In fact, Uryu was duping the Quincy the whole time time and was a double agent. This is because alongside the information he learned about the Sternwitters, he also learned about the Alshwalen and the truth behind his mother's death. It's revealed that Ishida joined the Quincy for one reason, to take revenge for his mother. However, by using Yuha's almighty, Hashwalt sees into his future and eventually comes to suspect Uryu. He would find objects Ishida had scattered around that were similar to his grandfather's, which leads Hashwalt to test his loyalty by attacking him. And then Ichigo shows up. Despite proving he is no longer with the Quincy, Ishida still attacks Ichigo and tells him to return to the human world, allows him to fight the Quincy alone. Due to their bond, Ishida wants Ichigo to leave and stay safe, telling him that destroying Yuha is something only he can do. As you see, Uryu used his big brain to calculate a strategic way to destroy Yuha while Ichigo was gonna just try to slam his big back sword on him. That's quite big. The goal here was to spread several destructive chips, basically bombs of Reishi throughout the Soul King's palace. These chips would then unleash Reishi across the entire castle and should be more than enough to destroy it and the stern winners. This is something only Ishida can do as these chips were passed down to him by his grandfather, meaning only his Reiatsu could activate them. However, this didn't get past Hashwalt. Hashwalt knew exactly what Ishida was going to do and just 
destroyed his gate to the human world, leaving Ichigo trapped in the Quincy domain. Uryu then realizes that as long as Yuha is asleep, he's vulnerable. Then Ichigo goes face to face with Yuha himself and Ishida takes on Hashwa. It's here where Ishida's new powers are shown to their fullest. Hashwal is incredibly strong, as when Yuha is asleep, he inherits the Almighty, essentially making him a god in his own right. During their fight, Ishida is severely damaged, but uses antithesis to reverse the effect and apply them to Hashwal instead. It was at this moment that he knew he However, this was all for nothing, as Hashwalt is a bigger menace than Ishida and once again drives Ishida into a corner using his own power. But before he can kill him, Yuhabak activates another Ashwal, and just like it did before, it absorbs most of, if not all of the Sternwitter's powers. In which case, Hashwalt isn't an exception and this kills him. Yup, imagine dying at the hands of the man you were trying to protect. <laughs> Due to Ishida having an immunity against Aushwal and he's able to survive this ending in his win. But that's not important because the dads are here. That's right, Ryuken and Ishin show up in front of Uryu, giving his son the biggest plot device in anime. I, I mean, I mean the silver arrowhead. Despite its controversial nature, this arrowhead is made from the silver that clots a Quincy's heart during Aushwal. All this time when Ryuken was digging through the body of Uryu's mother, he was trying to extract the silver blood clot that was formed in the heart. Ryukin then states that according to his father Soken, the arrow silver combined with the victim's blood will briefly stop Yuha's powers. This makes it an essential component in killing Yuha and Ishida is tasked with shooting it. Uryu would then make his way to the Soul Society where the goat Aizen is fighting Yuha. Working alongside him, Ichigo and Renji, Ishida is able to directly shoot the arrow at Yuha, disabling his powers. With Yuha's powers temporarily deactivated, Ichigo is able to cut through him using his Anpakuto, ending the life of the Quincy yes, King. Yes. By making everyone believe he was a traitor, Ishida was able to go behind enemy lines and become an essential piece of Yuha's downfall. Years later, Ishida pursues a career in medication and becomes a doctor. This is very significant for his character development as before, he vowed to never become one due to his father's actions. However, by becoming a doctor, it not only shows Ishida's resolve to help people but also his acceptance and implied forgiveness towards his father, bringing his character full circle. Like Ichigo and the others, Uryu continues to grow even further as revealed in the Hellverse arc. Here, he employs a technique known as Geru de Shrinku. Okay, I don't know how to say that, bro. It basically means safe in German and look box destruction formation in Japanese. With this safe, Uryu is able to launch a single Sere Schneider towards his intended target, which halts midair and forms a dense barrier of Reishi around his opponent. The multitude of tiny cuts caused by Sele Schneider forces the release of Reishi from the target's body, but it doesn't end there as Uryu makes sure to give the most painful death possible and tosses in a Ginto towards his trapped opponent, which results in the implosion of the barrier discharging into a bomb. Additionally, Uryu utilizes a variation of his light rain called light wind. Unlike the vertical descent from above, light wind is discharged horizontally from the ground towards the target. But if you want to know more about the hell arc and everything that happens in it, then make sure to smash the like button and check out the video displayed on screen right now.